Hey guys, Javier here with The Real Javier Novoa, channel, a platform, and a modality where we apply the principles of philosophy, spirituality, mysticism, in a word, interiorism, which we're going to be getting a lot more detailed in here in the next few days and weeks. We apply all of that to rapidly transforming your lifestyle to getting off the prison grid and living the life of your dreams. I had two back-to-back -back coaching calls today, ladies and gentlemen, and we discussed several topics. Of course, I would never give the information out as to the topics we discussed, nor to the individuals, unless I gave us permission to do so. But I just wanted to go into one aspect that was common between the two calls, the general tenor of it, what I was trying to explain to the clients and what has worked to change my life in business and very practical aspects and what has worked to change the lives of a lot of my clients. And of course, we had, didn't make a lot of videos uh, in the last week. I have been very, very busy. And it's something, again, that I'm definitely not going to tell you about. Never tell people about your intentions or objectives until they're done. And we're going to be telling you about it because the results are fast coming. I'm very excited about it. I'm basically absorbed in the living out of and the moving into an intention. It's very exciting. Again, you're going to be knowing about soon when it happens. We're going to be using it as a case study for the channel. But it ties into what I'm about to talk about. And we've been wanting to make some videos about this topic in a scientific manner. We will be doing it in a scientific manner. Right now, I just wanted to go into the generalities of it and the practicalities of it. And that is this. And as I said, it was common between both of our coaching calls. And that is, you set a target or an intention with your left brain, you fill out all those details with your left brain, and then you allow the path to that to be filled in by your right brain. And of course, there are many scientific aspects of this. We can explain it neurologically, we can explain it biologically, but I'm not going to try to do that today. I'm just going to use a very simple model as to how this works. You see, when we came into this world, we were pure consciousness. We were pure spirit. Of course, we still are. There's no separation. But when we took on a specific personality, of course, that happens higher up on the scale as well. But just for the purposes of this daily uh, work-a-day life, we took on a personality, and that personality can be embodied, can be represented by the left brain. And of course, as we all know, uh, scientifically, the left brain is considered the logical aspect, the day-to-day the -day aspect. It's the filter aspect, ladies and gentlemen. It's the aspect that basically sees, of course, filtered by the reticular activation system. It basically sees only... 0.0001% of everything that is. Of course, we know from physics that the light that we see is only a very small spectrum of all of the spectra of light. So there are even a lot of things in our physical universe that we can't see because of the light aspects of it. And even of what we can see, I forget the numbers, I think some scientists were saying that there are millions of of particles of input coming to us each second. But the brain at any one time can only see a hundred and something. I think it was 182. And even out of that, it's being filtered more. It's being filtered by your reticular activation system. It's being filtered by your subconscious expectations. And it's being filtered by the logic of your left brain. There are some stories, I don't know how true this is, but it seems true, that when Columbus's ships came, that the natives could not see the ships because they could not conceive of a vessel that could sail on water. Again, I might be incorrect on this, but it seems correct. And we've seen this in other aspects, that sometimes somebody sees something that's so outside of their belief system that they cannot perceive this. So that's what the left brain is, in a nutshell. Of course, this is all very sketchy because the left brain can't work without the right brain very much. And the right brain can't work without the left brain. They all give each other inputs. So this is a very imperfect model, but it serves to do the job. But 
when we choose something, guys, when we choose an end, we use our left brain. And that's what the left brain does easily and masterfully. What the left brain does is say, Javier, I want this. I want a car that's red and it's in a certain shape and it's, it has certain measurements and the tires are of a certain caliber. The left brain does that because it measures, because it quantifies, because it says, you know what, Javier, you're going to have this feeling, and I describe this emotion as this. You're going to feel elated when you sit in it. You're going to perceive a certain smell, and you're going to filter out the, in those aromas and so on and so forth, and it's a scent of this and that. The left brain does that masterfully. It can draw you a picture. It can help you to draw a picture. It can help your imagination draw a picture of the exact specifications of what you want. It's what Trevor Blake calls an intention. It's what we in this channel call an end. And when you know that end, you can live in that end and you can get into what we call on this channel state. Your left brain will help your whole brain and body and consciousness now get into that state of having what your left brain has chosen and pointed to. That's why Abraham said, Abraham Hitch said, we came here as pointers. We point. Now what does the left brain suck at? Okay? The left brain is very good at planning. It's very good at planning, actually. Some people say it's not good at planning. It's very good at planning. The left brain can plan a path from here to there, even if it feels bad, by the way, even if it's by force, and it can say, you know what, I'll take this step, then after that I'll take this step, then after that I'll take this step. And it makes a beautiful blueprint. The only problem is, the left brain sucks at making blueprints that actually work. You know why? Because the left brain cannot predict worth a damn. Why is that? Because the only information that the left brain has to go on is the material that's been filtered through your reticular activation system, through your biases, and the picture that's been painted and illustrated for it by the past. You see, the left brain lives in the past, so it can't predict the future. Sometimes it gets lucky, sometimes it draws upon the right brain. So the left brain can make a plan but the plan's not going to be very good. I can plan to go to Mars by jumping, and I can even scientifically draw it out with the left brain. It's probably not going to happen. That's why, but the left brain wants to dominate. The left brain wants to plan, because you know why? It feels good to say that the future's going to be like the past. But the future, if it's to change, and if you're to gain what you want to gain and to live the life that you want to live, it's got to be different from the past. So we have to put the left brain aside. Of course, the left brain is going to come in there to make sense of what the right brain is receiving, but we've got to put the left brain aside in the planning process. That's why many of my clients and the ones that I was speaking to today, that the topic that came up was, why are my plans not working? I've planned such and such. Your left brain's planned it. Your left brain has made a blueprint. What the right brain can do is receive. Why is that? Because you see, your right brain has access not only to what's been filtered through your reticular activation system. It has access to all of it because it doesn't filter all of it out. And why is that? Because the left brain is really par excellence, that part of your biology that's connected to the all that knows it is the all and that's living in that monism. Your right brain is one with the universe in a very literal way. And it's not closed off to it. It's open to it. So it's receiving everything. That's where your subconscious comes in. So what your right brain will do, if directed by the left brain, this is very important. You see, you don't want to plan with your left brain, but what you do want to do is instruct your right brain what to do. So then once it's instructed, the right brain will draw upon the materials that it needs to draw upon, and then will feed exactly what it needs at the correct time to the left brain. The only problem is your left brain doesn't know the correct time. Your right brain does. Your whole brain does. So you cannot 
demand a time frame for your right brain to get to your left brain. I hope you understand me just a little bit, and let's illustrate an example. So with the car, your left brain can determine exactly what car you want. You want a Jaguar, but of course you can't afford it. That's the way it always is, isn't it? And that's what makes life beautiful and interesting. Your left brain can try to plan, but your left brain calculates that within about seven years, if you stop drinking Starbucks, you might be able to afford this car. But you realize in seven years, I'm going to be in my early 40s, and it's really not going to matter what kind of car I drive anyway. <laughs> what you can do then is relinquish that to your right brain and say, okay, right brain, I want this car, and I want it quicker than I thought possible. And then your right brain will start feeding you information that your left brain most of the time is not going to be able to connect those dots to it being directly related to your end. So for example, your right brain will tell your left brain, tell them to go to Starbucks right now. And then you're going to say, well, I don't usually go to Starbucks, and th that's weird because I'm in my house. But that's when you have to take the action and do it. Go to Starbucks. Then you go to Starbucks and you meet someone who says, hey, you know what? I think you're an interesting guy and I'm going to write you a check for $20,000. It's not going to happen always, but I've seen it happen. It happens. It's not always going to happen in one jump. It could take many steps. But if you follow each step of your right brain, you'll get there quicker than you thought possible. And I want to just give you a little piece of this because while we can't time the right brain, while we can't time the inspirations, you can kind of time it because through experience, I've seen this happen in as little as one day and in as late as about two to three weeks. You can bet your bottom dollar that if you follow this process of relinquishing to the right brain and what I'm going to call on this channel right brain planning, you will get a blueprint together without making effort within three days to three weeks. That's my promise to you and you can try this. How do we do this? It's very simple. It involves journaling and it involves breathing and it involves meditating, being completely present so that you can allow that left brain chatter to turn off for just a little while. I was telling a client this. What do you do first? First, you want to spend one to three days, and it takes this long, guys, because, again, your conscious mind doesn't know everything. It says it wants a car, but do you really want that car? Why do you want that car? This is what you have to explore through journaling. And by the way, through that interchangeability, through that interdependence between the right brain and the left brain, when your left brain journaling what measurements you want and why, your right brain is going to come in through emotion and through feeling and even through some subtle thoughts. It's going to come in and help tell you why you want it, what details do you want, and do you really want it. So for the, say, for the, the instance in a car, you can start journaling what you want in the car, how you want it, and why you want it, and when you want it. Just journal that and do it in a meditative way. Don't do it in a way of force and don't try to look for an end because if you're seeking an end, that's your left brain coming in there and trying to force the right brain. But if you don't seek an end, that's the paradox, the end will come quicker. It'll come within three days to three weeks. So you journal about everything that you want about that experience. You get it very detailed. Joe Dispenza has given us a methodology where you can use a letter, and I've done videos about this. You can say, for example, the letter C for the car. You can connect your state through meditation with that letter, and then every time you recall that letter, you get into that state. So you want to practice the feeling aspects of this. You want to practice the physical aspects of this. Once you do that, figure out that it's what you want and why you want it, then you do something very subtle in your next journaling periods. It could be for 15 minutes every day. This is the way that's going to get it quickest to you. You sit down and you sort of say, you know what? I want a blueprint to just coalesce as to how I'm going to get this car. And it's going to show me. And I know it's going to show me at the end. And then just let that go. And then what do you do? You contemplate, you stare at your journal, 
and you say, you know what, I just want to sort of go off on tangents of things that I'm interested in or things that come to me that are not necessarily having anything to do with the car because they're not in the beginning going to. And so what you're going to do is you're going to start journaling about crazy, you know what, about crazy stuff, about stuff that has nothing to do with it, like my favorite cup, you know. What does my favorite cup look like? Did you see that stock today that, you know, in the stock market that was down? Uh, I saw this very attractive member of the opposite sex. What did, you know, what could I imagine about that? Uh, I read a good book. Journal basically randomly. And I promise you within one to two to three days of 15 minutes of doing this, that's going to start coalescing around an organizing principle. And you're going to start vaguely seeing a sort of blueprint towards what you want. You have to try this, and then I hope you come back to me in the comments and tell me that this has worked. This is basically what we're going to call the basic exercise of interiorism. You want to speed it up? You want to juice it up? Do this exercise. Again, don't demand a time frame, but expect it to happen within three days to three weeks I've seen it work time again and time and again in the life of my clients all it is is you're journaling randomly you're first of all figuring out exactly what you want you're figuring out exactly the feeling around what you want and then you're just journaling with the sub very subtle in the back of your mind knowing an expectation that this is going to somehow take you to a path to what you want Guys, within a few days to a few weeks of doing this, and I've done this many times, I get specific step-by-step -step plans that get me to where I want faster than I ever thought possible just by doing this, starting out with just random things, guys. That's the power of the right brain. This is your chat GPT. You think AI is sophisticated? And we can talk about that. You think chat GPT is going to replace jobs? No, guys. This right brain planning process is going to replace your job and it's going to replace it with non-necessity of having a job because you're going to have so much income coming in. It's also going to practice you in receiving intuition. It's going to train you to where you're going to start receiving things without even doing the journaling because your body is going to become a precise sensor of right brain activity. This is using the right brain. It's such a fun topic. We're going to be going into more videos about this coming out in the next few days and the next few weeks. We're going to scientifically give it a basis and we're going to go more into how the plan coalesces. This has just been broad strokes. So guys, remember, decide with your left, and I like this, and this is totally unscripted, guys, so these are just coming to me. Decide with your left brain, plan with your right brain, and get there with your whole self sooner than you thought possible. Guys, this is Javier with The Real Javier Novoa. Remember, we are doing coaching calls. I've had so, a few clients that have been keeping me busy, so I haven't been talking about it, but we are reactivating it again. I'm willing to put more time into it, and basically we're changing people's lives by together walking in these modalities. I'll put my email in the description so that we can talk about it more and uh, we can meet and do business together. And again, please, if you find value in our material, please subscribe and like to the channel. I think this information needs to get out there. It's information whose time has come and it's going to touch the lives of so many people. Of course, also, you'll be putting your energy in with a group of Master Manifestors. So guys, until very soon, this is Javier with much love and appreciation. Ciao.